Hi, it's Steve. Today we'd like to show you how to change the pantry end caps on your refrigerator. It's a really easy job. Let me show you how we do it. Now to do this repair, we'll need to remove some items from the refrigerator. You'll need to empty the pantry itself. And you'll also want to remove the crisper drawers and probably the crisper frame and glass from above it to give us more access. We'll start by pulling the crispers out and we'll set those aside. Now just lift up from the bottom on that crisper glass. And carefully remove it from the refrigerator and then set that aside. Lift up on the crisper frame, pull it forward and tilt it to remove it. You can then pull that pantry drawer completely out. So once it comes up against it stopped, just hold up on the lid, lift up on the front of the pantry, and pull it the rest of the way out. And we'll set that aside. Just push the rails back in. Next we'll remove the glass from the top of that pantry frame. Carefully lift it out and set it aside. Next we'll remove the actual pantry door. There are hinge pins on either side of that. We're simply going to flex that pantry cover just enough to release it from those two nail pins and we'll set that aside. And next we'll remove the support rails for that crisper glass, both front and rear, and we'll set those aside. And now all that remains to do is to remove the screws that secure those end panels to the side of the cabinet. They're held in place with quarter inch hex head screws, and there'll be three on each one. Fairly long screws that secure those. Now on the right hand end cap, to completely remove that, well, first of all we're going to lift up on the front of the end cap to clear a plastic catch that is attached to the cabinet. And then we're going to tilt it forward to disengage this slide adjustment at the very back. There's a little tab right in the very center at the back wall that we'll need to disengage. So lift up gently on the front and then pull it forward while supporting that cross piece on the back until it's disengaged. And then we can take that whole assembly out and we'll set it on a suitable work surface where we can change out the slide rail and that air adjustment piece on the back. And then we'll just repeat that process for the left hand end cap, although all we need to do is remove the three screws, lift up on the front of the end cap and pull it away. And again, just lift up on the front and pull it away from the back wall. And we'll set that one aside so that we can remove the glide from the surface of it. Now that we have the end caps on a suitable work surface, we'll start by removing the glides and we'll do the left hand one first. Just remove two screws that are down through these round openings. And lift the glide off, set it aside. We can then discard the old end cap. Now we'll lay the new end cap face up. And we'll take our glides. We want to make sure that we line up the round holes in the back with the holes in the front. That should happen when we slide that rail all the way inside the older piece. So start by putting the screw through first, line it up with the opening on the end cap. We won't tighten that completely until we have the rear screw in place. Tighten them both securely. We want to make sure that the notched portion of that glide is towards the front of the end cap. Now this one is ready to put back in the refrigerator so we'll just set that aside for now and then we'll go to the right hand 
end cap. Now on this end cap, we'll need to remove the slide control at the back, as well as the mechanism inside the end cap as well. So we'll begin by removing this back piece. And to do so, we're just going to compress the plastic on that piece and disengage it from the end cap. As we pull it away from it, we can then tilt it and that will allow us to slide it out of that slotted opening. We'll just set that aside for now. And next we'll remove this actuator arm from the back side of that end cap. You'll note that there are three plastic tabs that hold it in position. We're simply going to press down on that while we pull that actuator towards us. Disengage it from those three permanent pieces. Let's, let's pull away from that track. We'll carefully pivot it to release it from the control at the front. And again, we'll just set that aside. Now next we'll remove that slide control. And to do so, we're just going to put slight pressure on that tab. At the same time, we'll take a flat blade screwdriver and just flip that clip away from the side and then we can pull that out and we'll set that aside. Now we can turn the end cap over and we'll remove the glide. Lift the glide off and we can discard the old end cap. We'll lay the new one face up and begin by installing the screws for that Glide. Again, make sure that the notched portion of the glide faces towards the front. And then tighten both screws securely. Now we'll lay that end cap face down and we'll begin by popping in the slide control. Just position it through from the front, making sure that an elongated piece fits into the slot and then just press it into place until the clip snaps over that edge. Next we'll Put that actuator arm in place. Carefully hook that over the elongated portion of that control. Pivot it around. And then we're going to force it in underneath these three caps by pushing down on the three tabs. And this Slide that control back and forth to make sure that it works freely. And now we're ready to put the air adjustment portion on. So we'll start by lining up that slotted tab and the slotted opening on the actuator arm. Make sure it's engaged and pivot it around. And then by flexing that plastic piece, we're simply going to clip it into the back, make sure it's properly engaged. And now we're ready to put that assembly back in the refrigerator. Now when reinstalling the end caps, we need to make sure of one thing. At the very front, there is a little slotted opening that fits over the stud that is mounted into the interior wall of the refrigerator. It is a little square stud that protrudes out far enough that it will catch that little notch. We want to make sure that we do have that engaged. Now for the right hand end cap with the air adjustment piece on it, we need to make sure that we hook that tab into the slotted opening at the back. We'll do that first. Support the whole assembly, line it up, put that opening in the back, make sure it's fully inserted. 
and then just pivot it around into place. There are two protrusions at the back of that end cap that will fit into two more slotted openings. And then just hold up slightly on the front, press it down into place, and make sure it catches on that stud. Now we can put the mounting screws back in. And just make sure that that control operates that air glide at the back properly. Now we'll put the left hand end cap on and all we need to do is make sure that we engage the two locating pins at the back and the tab at the very front and then install the three screws. Now we're ready to put the cross rails on for the crisper glass. We'll start by putting the rear one in. Make sure that the channel sits into both of those slot grooves at the back. Do the same thing at the front, making sure the drop down portion points towards the back and we'll straddle that protrusion on the front of the end caps. And now we put the glass in. We'll just slide that back into position. Make sure it drops into those front and rear rails properly. Now next we can put the pantry tray in. And it doesn't matter whether you have the rails pulled forward or back. Just slide it all the way back. Let it drop down and it should catch both of those side rails. And just make sure that the hooks on the side of the pantry drop into those openings on the rails and it should slide freely. Now when installing this pantry door, we need to make sure of two things. There's a little detent on the very top here and that piece will drop into the slotted portions on the glides. At the same time, we need to make sure that the hook at the front of the pantry engages the end of that slide rail to keep it from moving sideways on us. So we're simply going to slide it in on top of those rails, push it all the way back. Let it drop down, then pull it forward, and then inspect each of those rails individually to make sure that they are properly engaged at the front. Again, just make sure that that rail is pulled far enough forward that the protrusion will drop down into that opening and also the hook at the front engages that glide. Properly engaged, that pantry drawer should slide freely on the tracks and have good clearance underneath at the bottom. Now next we'll put the pantry cover in place. Now when putting the cover in, you'll note that there are two holes, one on either side, that will line up with the pins that are attached to the actual end caps. So we'll start by sliding it over one of those pins. And then on the opposite side, we'll need to flex that piece just enough to fit it over the next pin. Now at this point, these fins on either side should fit inside of the pantry drawer. That will ensure that as we pull the pantry forward, that the cover opens. Now next we can put the crisper frame back in. We simply need to make sure that we line up the locating tabs at the very back of that crisper with the slotted openings on the back wall. And when we drop it down in place, the notches on either side will 
engage with the support pins on the side of the liner. Just go in over top of those supports, line it up at the back, and drop it down into place. Next, we'll put the crisper glass in. Again, we're simply going to slide it in on top of that frame and make sure it drops down into the recessed area. Then we can put our crisper pans in. Line them up with the rails. Make sure they're properly lined up. We can close the refrigerator up and your repair is complete.